Hello, this is David White with AutoGate Electric. I'm doing a tutorial on MX Control Center, a software platform by Mobotics. You're going to start by opening up the software and entering your credentials. Here's the main user interface. On the top you have a toolbar here. On the left you have a selection of layouts that have been uh, pre-created for you. A player, your PTZ controls, on the right when you select on a camera image you'll notice it puts a yellow highlight around the image and as you select cameras that knows which one you wanted to actually uh, control or use a certain function for. In your layouts you see a few predefined layouts here, parts, service entrance, service base, in here we have a Coles All. I'm not going to click on that. Just, well, let's do it. I am on a remote connection, so it's going to be a little bit slower than normal. And uh, it'll take a little bit of time to connect. That bing noise that you hear is something that can be turned off in the software for you too, but it's an alert saying that you have cameras that are offline, but it's because we're on a remote connection. If you go to these other folders here, we have two main layouts which we've grouped up with indoor and outdoor cameras. If you click on the folder icon uh, here, it'll show you all the indoor cameras at an overview. And then what we've done for remote connections to uh, deal with bandwidth issues, we've created smaller layouts just with the individual camera itself. Now if we go on the camera, we can click on the camera and come down here to PTZ controls. Now this is a hemispheric camera, uh, other people call it fisheye lens, and it gives you a complete overview of this area. Now we can change that overview because some people don't like it, and the uh, distortion, distortion that's there um, can be corrected with these controls here, in the PTZ controls. So you have a digital joystick that you can use to zoom, pan, tilt around the image, can pan right and use these controls here on the bottom and that way you can kind of look at what you want to see so we can watch this person walk down the aisle here now I generally go back to unchanged and just put that back in its normal mode if I want to actually see a recording on this camera there are a few ways to do that you can go up here to where the activate player mode button is. It looks like an old VHS uh, cassette icon and what that does is open up your player controls here. After some time it'll generate all of the recordings in the background and give you a time range. This time range shows the 9th till today which is the time of this recording, the 15th. And I've actually queued this up because I found something that was kind of funny uh, in one of the recordings and I noticed here in this image now if I double click this image it'll pull up a separate window that I can actually move around if I have a second monitor I can kick it over to the second monitor but I thought this was interesting with this uh, cardboard sign that looks looks like it's been knocked down <coughs> now I thought well who would have knocked that down and not picked it up so I went back on the recording and as we wound the recording, we realized, hey, there's nobody there. So I've kind of come back a little bit to when it happened. And I realized, well, it simply just fell over. Now I'm going to show you how to export this event. found it kind of funny, personally. Now I'm going to the player mode. If you look in your player controls, you have play, previous image, rewind. If you want to go all the way to the beginning, it'll take you to this date down here, 9-9 at 5.39 uh, p.m. Um, and then same thing, forward, move event forward, fast forward, and jump all the way to the newest event. Down here shows you the time that it actually is in this recording. And it'll also, also show you right here. If you know exactly what time you want to jump to, you can go to these two spots here pick a date, pick a time, and click this button here which says go to date and time. You can also drag this slider bar back and forth to select the approximate date or approximate time that you want to be at if you want to see something that's close. Now 
If I want to export this clip, I can use the marker mode. Click on that. I'll go ahead and fast forward through this. We'll watch this thing fall here for a sec. Just randomly fall over. Somebody must have opened the door or something and just the draft took it. And after a few seconds, I'll go ahead and hit stop. And you'll notice that it put a little green line here on your marker and mark that time sl uh, slot that you were uh, interested in. We're going to go ahead and close this just because it kind of gets in the way. Everything was happening also on this smaller image here, as you can see. Uh, we can hit the export, add to export button here, and it throws an item here. And you look at the date and time on here is a little bit different. What it does is this event was actually recorded for, oh, about 20 seconds. And it's going to take the entire 20 seconds um, and put it here as an exportable item. Now, if you're using MX Control Center, you'd want to use MXPEG. But if you need to export it and, say, give it to a police officer or somebody that doesn't have Mobotics Control Center or um, the MXPEG codec available to them, you could download it here as an AVI and it'll do a conversion for you. So we're going to go ahead and pick AVI click export and I actually have that recording already saved so I'm not going to re uh, save it because it takes some time just for uh, uh, video purposes but that is saved here in one of my files and I can show you I'm going to go ahead and delete that because we don't need that how this plays <laughs> box falling and everything. So we've got enough time before the event and enough time after the event to prove that nobody knocked that down. That's an EVI file. You can play that in Windows Media Player. I prefer VLC Player. So that's one way of using the uh, viewer, the player, for viewing recorded footage. There's another way here, right next to it, open video search, a little uh, binocular icon. If I select that, it gives, just gives me another way of doing it. Really, it's a preference thing. I use both depending on what I'm using it for. And uh, this one seems to be used when you want to narrow down some of your events. So it gives you a film strip up here on the top. And on this film strip, if you hover over to the center of one of these, you get a pop-up. It shows you a full image of what it is. You can kind of go in here. I'm not going to move my mouse here, but you can see the gentleman down towards the bottom right. That's probably uh, triggered that event. So I can move my mouse again, go to the next one. And this one could have been triggered by, oh, maybe a balloon or something. And this one could have been somebody on the sidewalk. So you can kind of go through on, oh, this guy it was... Uh, actually triggered by the lady here on the bottom left. So you can get an overview of what triggered the event this way. Um, and you can go left and right. I'm not going to do it just because it'll buffer and I'm on a slow connection here. But you can see what's triggered the event. And once you see that event, you can actually just click, let's say, this one here. It'll move it over to the center point. And you can play that event right here. And again, this is a very small window. Double click, you get another resizable window. This is what's being used here in this player. So you can actually stop, rewind, fast forward. Maybe I want to, you know, step by step, just frame by frame. You could use the frame by frame arrows here, back and forth. I'm going to close this again. Oops. On the left here, you'll have a list of all of your events that have happened. I can actually take this slider bar and bring it up, and you'll notice that it's Tuesday here on the date now. And when I drop this slider bar here, I've just now moved it to Saturday. So it's a little different slider bar compared to the other way. Um, and it takes a little bit of time to buffer, but it does give you now Saturday at this date and time. And here's the event here. 
and can you look the last five events and the five events before that up on the film strip. If you want to export, you can do the same thing here with your reference time and difference time. Or if you have this exact clip that you want, you can add it here to the export list. And it'll take that one and put it in the export list. If you want to save the current image to desktop, so let's say you found something here, this person here down in the middle, you want to save that to your desktop. You can click that button there. And when you go to your desktop, that image will be right here. So those are the two player controls in Robotics MX Control Center. Up here on the top, if you wanted to, this is a live image here, you can listen to what's going on. Again, some bandwidth. Might have a little bit of packeting. I do suggest signs for audio and video recording on premises uh, be installed at every location. There are a few other icons here on the top. We have uh, open an extra window. So just like double tapping, we can double tap that, or we could hit this, and it will pull that image up on another window you can move around. Uh, your processing, activate image post-processing, and items like that are generally not used now with the new 6 megapixel images. You can kind of go in there and tweak your um, sharpness and your brightness, uh, color scheme, and things like that not used too often now but you can actually clean up an image pretty well if you want to get into the uh, post-processing uh, settings. Save current image to desktop which is something that we just used there on the video tools. Uh, if you want to record to your local archive which means right now you could hit this button and record what's going on right here right now. Print current image to PDF if you have a PDF that you want to keep. You, you get to a point and you say, okay, I need an image of that. You can actually print that as a PDF. I showed you the speaker, the microphone. I could actually talk through that camera right now. Let's not do that. I may actually deactivate that on uh, some of the user accounts. We don't have lights or doors hooked up to the cameras, so you won't be using those. And then obviously to log out, you can use this little key symbol. It says, do you want to log out MX Control Center? Click OK. It'll open up the MX Control Center login screen again. And that concludes our tutorial. Thank you very much.